Hi there. Um, I'm just going to show you very quickly how to create uh, what we call a naive model. Uh, a naive model is something you can easily uh, generate uh, with any data and it's our sort of baseline model from which we can then assess the performance and the uplift that more sophisticated models are, are, are generating. So this is what we always recommend you do when you're faced with a new uh, forecasting problem and it's always worth just keeping track of a naive model uh, to see what value you're adding um, as forecasters. So I've got the data here um, in the forecaster as usual. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and forecast called Offord. Um, so this is my target. Uh, I'm going to use a custom model. Uh, and the custom model that I'm going to choose uh, will need a few things to set up. The first thing, it does need an input. Even though we're, um, we're not going to use it as an input, just, just a quirk of the system uh, that requires us to choose that as an input. Um, I'm not going to use regression. I'm going to use custom model. I'm going to go to the settings. And for this particular custom model, um, the script I'm going to use is what we call our naive day of the week forecast. And this forecast is really straightforward. All it does is looks at the training data that we've told the system to use. And over that training period, it just works out what the average day of the week uh, value is for calls offered. So it looks at calls offered on all the Mondays, all the Tuesdays, all the Wednesdays, and then uses that as the forecast. So it's a really simple model. It doesn't know anything about uh, marketing. It doesn't know anything about um, your customer base or anything that's going on in your business. But it, it, it's something you can generate very quickly um, and use as a baseline against which to assess uh, more sophisticated models later on. So I'm going to choose um, that script there. Now before I run the script I need to set the start point. So I think I'm going to go down somewhere into June towards the bottom of my data here um, and set a start point. So I've got a start point here on the 14th of June 2010. Now what I want to also do is I only want to use say the last four weeks uh, to generate my, um, my averages. So I'm going to use the data ranges option within the forecaster. And rather than specifying a fixed training start, which tells us how far back uh, we can go in our history, I'm going to do a fixed training length. And here I'm going to specify 28 days, which tells the system to use 28 days prior to the start point. So if I close that dialog now, we should be able to scroll up and see that here's our start point. And then these cells in this column here are all red for 28 days back uh, from that start point. So that's the data that we're going to use when we train the model. So what have I done? I've set calls offered as a target. I've put this input in. It doesn't matter which column it is. That's not used by the, um, the model. It's just a quirk of the system. Uh, so we have to have at least one input to a model. I chose a custom model. Um, I specified that this was my start point. And on the settings, there's one other thing I need to set up, which is the parameter for this script. So you can see here in the description uh, that it requires one parameter, the name of the date column. Well, the date column for this project is the key, which is also uh, over here, and that's called date. So we just type in date there. We can now train this model. So it's taking that data, it's looking at the last four weeks, working out what the average is, and using that as the basis for a forecast. That's now finished, so I hit the forecast button. So the model's been trained, and now forecast. And we can go to the analysis tab now, and we can straight away see uh, how that forecast is performing. So we've got the usual error metrics down here, uh, the RMS error. Um, being 4,500 calls um, with an average call around about sort of 1,500. And you can see that the profile is just repeating day after day after day, which we'd expect because the, the model has no other information in it uh, other than the historical call volume. And all, we, all we've done is take a, a, a rolling average. And you see it's not too bad actually for the first um, few days of the forecast. Uh, but if we were to push that forecast back and look at it performed over the history, you can see that the history here is fluctuating up and down and the model's just flatlining through. So it's not a, not a great model. Uh, but having said that, it's a model you can produce very quickly and it gives you a starting point with your RMS error from which you can assess additional models that might use regression, might use um, a REMA type models, you might be using decision trees in your networks. But this baseline naive model uh, is our starting point. So to create it, we came into the data tab, we set the start point. In the data ranges, we told it how much history to use. If you wanted to use more weeks in your history uh, to do your averaging, you can, you can set that up there. We gave it the target. In terms of a, an input, we had to give it an input because all models require an input in the system at the moment. Uh, so we had to tell it error calls an input. It's not used uh, in the forecast, so don't worry about that. Um, and then we hit train and forecast. What we could then do is rename this. So we might want to keep this naive model as a benchmark. So there's our naive model. Uh, and then what we'd normally do is we'd create a snapshot of this um, and then work on that data snapshot to add in more columns, more sophisticated models, and then we can compare the two models side by side. 
So there we have it. So that's how to create a very simple forecast and we recommend that you do that every time you use the forecaster, especially for new lines where you don't quite know uh, what's a good or bad RMS error. Uh, that just gives you a straight, simple model um, from which you can assess the value that your forecasting is then, is then generating.